Well, hey, yeah, Aquarius, thank you for joining me here at the Oracle of the Feather Crown Tree for your Virgo season reading. I always love connecting with your energy. I have a Aquarius, Venus, and Jupiter, so a big part of me loves that. Loves the old Aquarius energy, or should I say the new, the ever-aspiring new energy of Aquarius. So this spread will start with your center card, which is representing your heart space. And then we will move over to the card on the left in the center, which is there to represent the first house in the astrological wheel. We will work our way counterclockwise around the wheel until we get to the 12th house, and I'll just kind of explain things as we go through. Do you join me for my other readings? If you're interested, you can look at my different playlists for the other themes that I hit on throughout the month, and I'm going to start doing, along with my daily chakra readings, a yes or no question answered for that reading as well. So your center card in this reading is really talking to me about enjoying the last of, of something as it's kind of fading away. Like it's reached its pinnacle, yet it's going. And it could just be the seasons that we're in. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, we are beginning to wind down with summertime. Yet there's this, um, this ecstaticness, this celebration of it, you know, that you've been through something that was beautiful and you recognize that it was transitory and you're happy to have experienced it. And you know that as this fades away, you know, the cycle continues and something that you don't even know will emerge. So this leads life to feel like it's ever-changing, that there's mystery preserved in the process. And I get this um, warming sensation, this feeling that you get from the forest, you know, from bathing in a forest even, of really feeling protected in the energy of, of that type of space and the feel of it and the sensory experience of it along with the energy. It's a very enriching experience to engage with. So I encourage you to, you know, be in that environment, that it's good for your heart if you can engage in spaces like that. And it will keep you feeling vital. It will keep your your passion and kind of your ecstaticness, um, even the romance in your reality, um, vibrant and, and full of, of energy. So now looking at your first house, which is really the identity that you are presenting. I see you you showing up as yourself here, you know, there's no apologies and you feel very natural. You actually don't feel like you're masking whatsoever. And there is a nice balance of, of feeling empowered or the balance is empowered where you're not abusing power and you're not feeling weak, you know, you're not hiding. So Whatever you're doing, it, it's working, and it's also bringing in a little extra magic to your reality, which is surprising to you, that you feel that balance is actually not boring. You know, not living in the extremes brings in the possibility for your energy not to be used in ways that prevent the magic from coming in naturally. Magic that you don't even have to manifest, that's just there when you give it the space to exist. So your second house of value it seems that you have 
either been in this energy or that you are connecting to this energy and it's one of knowledge so it's the the energy that you get or the information that you can get through mentorship through other people leading you from having elders around you and from seeking that through other resources and having a community that really holds that for you. So maybe you're involved with a church, maybe you're involved um, in school right now, maybe you are just in a group where you're exploring a certain theme that you're all interested in. But there's something here that is precious to you about this experience that has your focus on it and that you're giving your, your like you're investing in it basically. So good for you. It looks like you're embracing growth there. So your third house, which is communication and your immediate community. I see you kind of secretive. I see you kind of um, hiding um, in the shadows and kind of cloaking yourself. And there may be just this sort of energy that you've thrown out there that you're passionate about and that is is really full that sort of supersedes your own presence you know that you are just the the channeler for in a way you're just the spokesperson but your own personal identity isn't necessarily connected to it so there there just may be something that you're trying to grow, share, that you are very passionate about. And you're trying to spread this in a way that doesn't feel necessarily tied to your ego self. Okay, now I'm going to look at your fourth house of family and home ancestry. I see you very calm, so this space may feel like not much is going on here. There is the presence of the void, and that you're in the void. So in this space, it's like the process of birthing, in a, in a way. It's part of the process of birthing precedes the birthing. So it's the generation of something that will be birthed. And I sort of see you just in this space and maybe using your home environment um, or family around you as part of this process, but you are acknowledging that that you need to be in this part of the process and you're it's just really lovely because you're not fighting it it's just sort of you've surrendered to it you've accepted it it's a very um it's a very mature energy yet innocent you know it, it, once again it's sort of paradoxical um and possesses that energy that you're emitting in your first house where you've balanced um you know two two extremes, you know how to be in that space of neutrality. And because of that, it frees up energy, you know, so things can manifest sometimes um, faster, you know, things aren't working against themselves so much, like you're allowing the process to just unfold. So your fifth house of you know, your presence sort of on the daily stage and the type of recognition you may receive through that. What 
what I'm feeling from this is, I've always admired this card, it's so beautiful. Um, this area feels complex. The core of it feels lovely in a way that really transcends the mind's way of understanding a lovely. It's a, a visceral lovely. It's a sparkly, beautiful type of lovely that really can't be experienced in the 3D, but is sensed and can exist through the imagination and um, beyond this this dimension. So I feel like whatever's going on here, you know, you're you're holding on to that. It's kind of like an idealistic energy that that's at the core of of what you are asserting out there. And to make this exist, you are acknowledging that it's taking a lot of collaborative effort and people that have strengths in different areas, or these may be your own strengths that you're being called on to present a variety of aptitudes to be able to assert this more idealistic uh, will that you may have. And in a way, it's, it's a dream. It's a way of saying that um, I'm going to recreate reality through this dream. So for me, it's kind of coming out of this previous card where you're in that space of, you know, the womb of gestation. And, and this is it evolving a little bit more and really becoming more manifest, like you are projecting the image, the desire for this new reality. Now looking at your sixth house of daily routine and health, it looks like you're doing just fine. Um, you are in this space really of vitality, of feeling uh, longevity, uh, and you are using the resources that you have. You're, you're using the, you're accessing the right resources to bring this energy about. And you have the insight, the, the wisdom, the mental power that makes this happen. So it looks like you have done Quite a bit as far as knowing how to care for yourself and making yourself into the type of energy that you want to be in. You know, you have a lot of choices of, of what you can create, what you can put into your body, how you can program yourself, and you have made the choices that serve your interest as far as that goes. I think it's a very uh, determined uh, self-guided energy that's being manifested there. Okay, so your seventh house, relationships, balance, even judgment. Again, this is full of Aquarian energy. <laughs> it's like such a shameless uh, presentation of self where it feels a little bit odd but there's such uh, an enigma around that. And you're not really doing it in a way to be showy, to try to get um, energy, you know, using your, your energy, your physical presence in any way to garner attention. It's just who you are. And there is a loveliness about it, a playfulness but once again it's balanced it's playful yet mm, purposeful you know uh, it, it's got such self mastery involved and it's it's defying logic it's so beautiful so you really have you know 
illogical and logical mastered here and how to use them. You're, it's as if you're using both sides of your brain equally. And you're, you're really generating a lot of energy by doing this around you that you're able to exist in. You feel very alive right now. And your eighth house of going deep, um, personal investigation. There may be a tool here that may be religious in nature for you that helps you towards further self-development and self-understanding. And this may be something that's very historic. It may be something that has the power to generate a lot of energy itself and to really fill you internally with its power, like you are empowered by it. So this could be many things, especially given your cultural context. Of course, the Bible comes to mind, you know, in, in ours, you know, that the book that can provide such a source of personal reflection and nourishment for some people. But like I said, culturally, it could be a, a number of things. So, yeah, that's, I don't have much else coming through there. Um, I'm looking now at your ninth house of growing beyond what you already know, seeking something higher than what you've sought before. Here we see you um, levitating in a way. So there I guess, and when I when I look at that symbolically, there's something about the unexpected coming through, um, about the transcendent moment coming through, even where you've gone beyond the expectations of reality. So you may be um, someone that's done a lot of spiritually focused work, where you've really evolved your identity as a soul, as a spirit, that you understand your place in the ever-evolving cosmos and you are allowing yourself to be in that process of evolution and you work to align yourself so that you can be in the best position for this, so that you can be affected in a way that transforms you so you're you're unstuck and you're able to to receive maximum benefit through the investment that you make in seeking greater insight and spiritual enlightenment looking now at your 12th or pardon me your 10th house and this is the place of your achievements and the sort of the legacy that you're building for yourself in the world. So it looks like uh, wisdom is important to you. It looks like uh, the transformative element of not being afraid of the dark, like realizing that, that the darkness is a transform transformative space for very powerful things to come into existence. Uh, there is a connection to the whole of the universe of understanding that you are a creator, a co-creator in this ever transforming universe. That there are forces in this universe that are protective and wild at the same time that can progress transformation at a greater 
pace because they know how to use destruction when necessary to bring about transformation. Um, more, you know, they can expedite the process of it. Uh, again, we're seeing an expression of almost like two types of fruit that are being bared here, two types of knowledge and a balance of these, these knowledges, you know, like a, a tree that bears two fruits is kind of unheard of, but there's a fruit that's actually physical and there's a fruit that is energetic that you seem to be in understanding of. And not everyone may have the awareness of this. You seem to be very, very peaked in your your knowledge. Like you, not only are you knowledgeable, but there's like a whole nother layer of knowledge on top of that. You may be working with an energy that's giving you, like you're downloading a lot of um, knowledge from that there's a master that you're able to to tap into that is helping you grow and helping you grow the universe uh, towards more enlightenment and, real and self realization. Okay, so we are now moving on to the 11th house hopes, wishes, dreams. Seems like you're creating a portal in a structure that may feel a little uncomfortable to do. And it's definitely a structure that, you know, depending on how you look at it, what, what point you are able to access it, you get a, a new perspective, you know, so that is truth. Um, and you're viewing one of the facets of the truth and creating, you know, piercing through that truth into a deeper reality. So it's pretty heavy um, as, as far as like uh, advanced <laughs> thinking. It's not so quite heavy. It's just really advanced technology or something. The 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 like purpose of this is to get to a deeper layer a, a deeper level of reality to build from a space you know like a higher dimension basically almost like a quantum leap that you're taking so in some way you're mastering uh the technology and you're not letting the veil of of an illusion or a certain level of development be enough for you. You're saying, I can move through this and, and gain more wisdom, more mastery, more insight. And your 12th house. I feel like you're in a state that you've been in for a while, which is creating an energetic field around you because you have a a lot of self-love, a lot of security, a lot of knowing how to be at peace with yourself, of not letting the outside world affect you and make you feel unbalanced. And I think you get this through an extra layer of, you get the security through a connection to something beyond yourself, to a being that may be a master for you, which showed up earlier in your reading too, that is a source of comfort, is a source of stability, wisdom, that keeps you of sound mind, that protects the way that you communicate and allows you to have the ability to feel open yet protected at the same time, especially from your heart space, that you, you're not, 
you're not just wide open there. Like you, you can open and close that space at your, with your free will. And you don't have to work at it. it it's like you've learned that technology. So again, balance. Like you, you seem to have really evolved the technology, like even understood spirituality as a science, as technology. And through that, you are, are able to master neutrality. And it just seems like it, this is a, a very, you know, evolved energy and that it probably has come and has been advanced through your ability to allow in masters that are helping you understand more of this process than you would know just by, you know, happenstance. So, wow, I hope I uh, encounter quite a few Aquariuses during this time because I feel like you have a lot to to teach, but not in that way where you're preaching, like through actually just being, you know, and living the example. So amazing. Uh, cheers to you. And I'm sending you blessings. Hope that you have a beautiful and exuberant and peaceful Virgo season. Please join me again if you can. Thank you.